Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harrison, welcome. Thank you for testifying at this hearing. Thank you. Google is at every stage in the advertising process. On the buy side, Google serves ads and has a buying platform. On the sell side, it has an ad exchange and is the publisher. No other company that I'm aware of is in every space, and, and no other company is nearly as prominent. Given that, would you agree that, that Google plays a dominant role in buying and selling ads online? Uh, Senator, I, I agree that, that we have built tools, and, and again, obviously, tremendous success with our own properties and how we sell advertising on our own properties. And, and we are invested in the success of a publisher ecosystem, a broad publisher ecosystem, because we think that's, that a vibrant, successful internet ecosystem is good for Google, also good for the publishers that participate in this ecosystem. The, whether or not, the question you're asking is whether or not we're dominant. To me, dominant implies some sort of abuse. And, and again, all I see are, are lower no, prices. No, I didn't talk about abuse. I'm just talking about the degree of market power you have by, by any measure. Google is the 800-pound gorilla. Uh, isn't that right? Is there anybody even close? I, I think that, that, well, first of all, I do, I do think there are companies that, that are at or larger size than this, but I also think that the, the idea of dominance and market power means the ability to raise prices or lower innovation, and prices have fallen in our investment in innovation. Again, $28 billion in 2018, that's up 10x over the last 10 years. Our, our what companies do you believe are at or or more dominant in buying and selling ads online? Well, I think we have healthy competitors. I think Facebook is is a very successful company. I think Amazon in building both its own ad products as well as its um, supply side capabilities is, has also proven itself to be a capable competitor. All of these competitors exercise constraint on our ability to either charge prices or not invest in innovation. And, and to me, that is a healthy uh, competitive environment. Now, Facebook and Amazon are, are not competing with you in the search space, are they? Yeah, yes, uh, Senator, I, I would say that they are competing with us in the search space. I don't... Look, I'll confess, I've Googled something today. I haven't Facebooked it. I haven't Amazon. I may have actually ordered something on Amazon, too. But if I'm searching for something, I, I, I go to those sites for different purposes. Is that is that... When someone wants to find out some information, when someone wants to find out what does Joe Biden think about taxes, they search Google, and, and the Google search results are what they look to. Is that correct? So, Senator, I, I think it's a, a great question, and, and if I could share, I, I don't think, I think that we offer a general search engine. That is, that is our value proposition, and I'm happy that we have built a good general search engine in that maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we occupied a specific space. And and I know some of the numbers that are thrown around are because people compare us as a general search engine to other general search engines. But I don't think that that's how the search for information begins. I think that people decide that they want to buy something, right? And then they have a choice. They can go to Yeah, I'm, I'm not talking about invest. purchasing something, and I agree for online purchases. If you're buying books online, Amazon has a dominant position. Let's focus on, you, you, you took issue with, with dominance, and you said, well, gosh, Google isn't abusive. Uh, there's been some discussion of this already during the hearing, but, but earlier this year, Google used its market position to threaten the Federalist, which is a conservative website, and demanded that it, it remove its comment section, that it take it down or it wouldn't be able to use Google Ads. Um, if Google isn't dominant, why does it have the power to demand of a media publisher it disagrees with that it take down the, the comment site and why does it expect immediate obedience? So, so we have an, an ads product and that ads product, has many policies that determine what we can show ad inventory against. I think that if you're uh, someone who makes, you know, child clothes and and want to sell child clothes using our advertising system, you do not want your children's clothes to appear next to harmful or offensive information. In the Federalist uh, case, their comment section had racist commentary in it, and we are that violated our ads policies, and so we couldn't show ads next to that content. And those policies are clear, they're published, they're understandable. So how many other media outlets do you demand they pull down their comments pages? 
any any media outlet that that contained offensive information like like the racist information that was in the Federalist, we would not show ads against. We're not asking them to pull it down. Let's be so, so Google very, very owns YouTube, which is a dominant media viewing platform. YouTube allows comments. There are racist and offensive comments on YouTube comments. I'm assuming that Google, Google does not demonetize its wholly owned subsidiary YouTube. Is that right? So we give three choices to publishers, and, and I will answer your question. We give three choices to publishers. One is they don't have a comment section. Uh, secondly, they put their comment section behind another click. And by the way, a lot of large news publishers do this, like the New York Times, where to get to the comment section, you click once, it takes you to a separate web page, and there are no ads showing on that web page. The publisher is free to operate. The comments appear on a separate page. Or third, they can choose to moderate their comments page. This is what YouTube does. YouTube heavily moderates its comments page. We removed almost 700 million YouTube comments in one quarter. We uh, remove most comments uh, at the at the 99% mark before people even see them or as soon as they appear. So we take efforts to moderate, and that's why ads can show show next to that. The so in the, in, the, in the past two years, how many websites, how many media outlets has Google used its market position and market power on ads to force them to take down or change their comment page? How, how frequently has what happened to the Federalist happened to others? I, I would have to get back to you, uh, Senator, with that answer, and I'm happy to get back to you with that answer. I would point out, though, that we 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 do receive complaints on either side of the aisle on this issue. Uh, we've pulled down videos on The Daily Show, on um, uh, on uh, Last Week Tonight, and Democracy Now!, and have received complaints from those sites. So we operate a wide platform. That wide platform has more views that have probably ever been expressed on, in human history in one platform. And we get complaints from both sides uh, when we use our policies, again, clearly stated policies, to pull down content. So, Mr. Harrison, I'm going to follow up with you in writing and ask you for that information. And you just represented to this committee that Google will provide that information. I've asked you for that information before, and Google has stonewalled and refused to give an answer. So I'm hopeful that your testimony here will be followed up on by, by some, some modicum of, of transparency. Um, let's talk about YouTube for a second, and our time is wrapping up here. Some time ago, I visited with the YouTube CEO who reports to, to Google, and she described to me with respect to Steven Crowder, another conservative slash libertarian comedian talk show host, uh, who Google demonetized. She described how the left was pushing YouTube to ban him altogether, and she sat in my office and argued that we should be happy that, that YouTube didn't ban him, they simply demonetized him. They simply took away his ability to earn money, and she thought that was a middle ground, even though she conceded that he'd done nothing to violate, violate YouTube's terms of service. Now, I pointed out that the demands to censor and silence are only coming from one direction. They're only coming from the left, that I was not asking her, others were not asking her to censor or silence leftists, to censor or silence socialists. I'm happy for them to speak as much as they like, because I think their ideas don't withstand scrutiny. Do you think it's acceptable for Google and YouTube to engage in politically motivated and biased censorship by using demonetization to punish anyone whose speech uh, it disagrees with? So, Senator, whether it's search or YouTube, uh, political bias, political viewpoint does not influence whether content uh, appears or doesn't appear, whether it appears at the top, or wherever it appears on our website. We simply we have designed our policies so that political bias is not part of the equation. We have, whether it's YouTube or search, we have clear policies of this at the outset. We have a very rigorous process to make sure that when new experiments, new new exchanges, and we do almost 400,000 experiments a year. So, so my time has expired, but but as a final question, are you familiar with, with Dr. Robert Epstein's research, and how would you respond to his conclusions that are directly contrary to what you just testified? Yeah, I... Senator, I'd love to follow up on that, especially with a quick answer. I, I am aware of, of the survey. I think we found that the methodology wasn't effective. 
and we actually ran our own searches, uh, sorry, our own uh, investigations actually into the Senate to figure out whether or not we could find any bias in either how YouTube ads perform, YouTube performed or search performed. Uh, we compared both Republican and Democratic senators. We found that they were very evenly balanced on both sides of the aisle in terms of their engagement on YouTube uh, or how our click through rates worked on search. And so we don't, you know, we don't agree with this. And and by the way, the Economist has also reviewed both our search, um, you know, our search providers, and have found no evidence of political bias. And and the Economist is an outside organization. Will obviously. you provide that study to this committee? Uh, yes, I will. Thank you.